Gorilla Sign Language? Silica based quartz sand fabric. Abrasion resistant? Heat resistant? Uh, yeah, I do competitive ice dancing. It's what they use on the space shuttle to prevent it from burning up on re entry. I do very competitive ice dancing. Ah, mother. Ah. Vibranium is stronger than steel and a third the weight. It's completely vibration absorbent. What if I was to tell you that there exists a science that can make all of these things come true someday? It's a subject that combines physics, chemistry, mathematics, biology, and computer science to bring alive these weird substances and cool materials that you thought were only possible in the movies. In this video, we'll talk about exactly what it means to have a career in material science and engineering. This is Science Teens, where we help you make the right academic decisions for your career in the sciences. Be sure to like and subscribe so you can stay up to date and help other students as well. Pause this video and take a look around you. What do you see? Probably a bunch of stuff. Clothes, furniture, books, food and devices. All of the things without which imagining modern life would be really difficult. The stuff this stuff is made of is called a material. The phone or laptop on which you're watching this video has thousands of materials inside it. Some simple and some complex. There's plastic in the screen guard, a different plastic in the cover, aluminum in the frame, and a lot of different semiconductors inside the circuits, which would be a little difficult for me to explain right now, but you get the picture. Materials don't even have to be this complex. The cotton in your t-shirt and the paper on which you write is also a material. Once you get past these, there are so many more cool applications of material science that we'll get to in a minute. Given all of this, it wouldn't seem so surprising to you when I tell you that this industry, the one that's responsible for making these thousands of materials, is one of the fastest growing sectors in the world. And if you're a science student, that loves making things the world has never seen before, it's a field you should definitely consider exploring. What do material science engineers even do? And what could they be doing in the future? We just spoke about a few common materials that we see and use in our daily lives. And it's not an exaggeration to say that the world practically depends on thousands of scientists and industry managers responsible for the large-scale manufacturing and production of these materials. But if I'm being honest, what really excites me about this field is the research aspect of it. And when I say there's a lot to cover here, I'm not kidding. Sustainable energy. These applications range from creating effective photovoltaic cells for solar panels to insulating paint that can decrease energy requirements in air conditioning. An industry centered around environmental sciences is sure to have a lot of potential in the future. Biomedical applications. Medicine and drug delivery systems are evolving every day. From creating artificial skin that could help burn victims regenerate tissues, to carbon nanotubes that could be used to deliver oncodrugs in cancer patients. Material sciences play an essential role in advancing medicine and healthcare all over the world. Aerospace engineering. The world is showing an increasing amount of interest in space travel, both for tourism and for research purposes. Reducing costs by developing materials, not just for space shuttles and aircrafts, but also garments that could be used to protect you from ultraviolet radiation in space, while remaining cool and lightweight, is an essential step in this field. Computer science and technology. This is an industry built upon the science of semiconductors. Since the role of computers is only expected to increase in the coming years, making semiconductors more cost-effective and sustainable is an essential step towards a better society. Automobiles. The science of creating alloys, paints, and lubricants used to make vehicles like F1 cars and military ships and aircrafts that need to withstand high speed and temperatures also requires an in-depth understanding of the material sciences. Of course, in the end comes the areas of this field that define the line between material science research and material engineering. This is the stuff 
that's pushing the boundaries of what we know as materials and of what science has been able to achieve so far. Could you imagine a dark matter cup of coffee? Well, neither can I, because that doesn't exist yet. But guess what? There are people sitting at research institutes all over the world trying to create something like that, or maybe something that resembles it. No, you probably can't drink from it. And the amount of energy and money required to produce something like that is way more than even a country can afford. So why do it? Because science is cool and scientists are crazy. A good kind of crazy, I hope. How do we get started? The typical academic journey for a material scientist or engineer looks something like this. Once you identify that you have an interest in this field, you could select science subjects like biology, chemistry, physics, maths, or CS in high school. After four years of high school comes a BSc or bachelor's in science degree. This is a three to four year undergraduate program in a university of your choice, where you could select a course on material science and engineering. Most advanced careers in this industry will require a master's degree as well. If your inclination is towards pure research, you could go ahead and pursue a PhD at any point in your career. This is independent research that will take you upwards of three years and will separate you from the rest of the crowd. Keep in mind, material science and engineering is a broad field that covers disciplines like pure science, engineering and architecture. Hence, most science and engineering courses in college will set you up with a strong foundation to start off with a career in the material sciences in the future as well. As mentioned before, a lot of the skills that you learn as a material science student are common to fields like science, engineering and technology. These include analytical thinking, mathematical aptitude, IT literacy and computer modeling experience, research skills, creative thinking, organization, commercial aptitude and collaboration. We've already spoken about a few of the major industries that employ these people. But what does a career realistically look like? Here's a non-exhaustive list of the jobs you could be pursuing in material science. Keep in mind that like any STEM and technology degree, the skills you obtain here are valued across all fields. Which is why a transition to other technology, IT, engineering, commerce, and even finance fields is not too difficult to achieve in the future. In India, a starting level material scientist earns around 50,000 rupees monthly, ranging up to 1 lakh if you have had experience in software modeling or a strong research background. At a higher level, salaries can range from 3 to 5 lakhs, depending on the type of employment, type of projects handled quality of education and experience you've received. In the US, the mean annual wage for a material scientist is 100,000 USD annually, placing them in one of the highest earning STEM fields there is. Some of the most respectable Indian institutes for studying material science and engineering are listed over here. and some of the most famous science institutes in other countries are as such. Here comes the big question for every subject. Yes, it sounds interesting to hear about it. But is material science really a subject I want to pursue my career in? Here's a short segment from our interview with material scientist Dr. Rajesh Ganpati, reflecting upon how he entered science in the first place. You know, uh, in school, you know, there are these occasions in which a new teacher comes in, uh, you move into a new grade, and the first thing they try to, you know, get you on a comfort zone is to basically ask, what do you want to become in? Right? And uh, people say all sorts of things. And my vaguest recollection of the uh, answer that I've given is I think I told my teacher I wanted to be a scientist, okay? So I didn't know what it meant at that point, but I used to read quite a bit of science books. But one thing that I did indulge in a lot is I used to tinker around 
at home all the time trying to open up stuff uh, just trying to see what's inside uh, I used to build a lot of things at home uh, okay and I think that got me into experimental physics according to Dr. Ganpati science specifically feels like chemistry and physics research are meant for those people that find comfort in learning about the properties of the world around them in a similar interview Dr. Surya Kadamisetti, metallurgist and materials engineer, states that although the path of entering this field was difficult at times, he was truly able to understand its importance after studying it for a few years. In conclusion, material science is meant for those of us that love studying all science disciplines and are looking for ways to combine them. It's a field that requires analytical thinking, creativity, and the desire to do and make things that no one has ever seen before. If this is something that excites you, you're on the right track. If you want a video on the steps you should take as a student to secure admission into the top science colleges, let me know in the comments. As always, this is Scienteens and be sure to like and subscribe so you can keep seeing content like this.